Good evening, everybody. Good to see you on this beautiful Sunday night. We're glad you're here. We're going to have a wonderful time together in the Lord. And we welcome all of you that have joined us online. We pray that this uh, will be a joyful time as you as well. I have just a few announcements for us tonight. Number one, uh, we want to remind everybody that VBS is coming soon. It's going to be the 22nd through the 26th, 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Uh, we have a host of people working together to make this happen. And we pray that we'll have a host of a children come to join with us. So if you know of a child that would uh, like to uh, be part of VBS, please uh, get in contact with us. We'd love to have them here. And then, ladies, you're going to have a women's night out at Ann Percy's home and pool at July on July the 13th at 4 p.m. That sounds like it's going to be a great time and you're gonna enjoy fellowship with one another. So that's ladies, July the 13th. And then upcoming, we have our junior and senior high camp at Alpine, uh, July 15th through 19th. And so uh, we're always thankful to have our kids go to camp and we pray for them that they'll have a great time. And then for all of us, all of us who are older, we have family camp in August, August 7th through 11th. And so if you would like to go to that, please see Pastor Jared. He has all the information on that, and I know that he'd be happy to have you come and bless your heart. Okay, <laughs> well, let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time together tonight. We know we have some folks gone. We know that family and health, and we just pray for those who are not with us. We ask your blessing upon them, dear Lord. We pray that your touch should be upon them, and we just ask for, for them tonight. For those of us that are here, we're thankful to be together. We're thankful for who you are, whom we worship. We thank you for your love for us, and we just pray now that as we spend time together tonight, that you would be praised and we would be strengthened in you. And this we ask in the name of Jesus, and everyone said, amen, amen. All right, everyone, it's good to be with you guys this evening. Time to worship the Lord together and enjoy in the, in the Lord's Supper um, as well. Excited for all the things coming up that we have here at TFB. Get to go to camp and all that fun stuff with high schoolers and junior hires and just uh, pray for us too. That's not this week, that's the following week, but <laughs> God is good. I'm going to be reading from 1 John 4, 17 through 21. It says, by this is love perfected with us so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment because as he is, so also are we in this world. There's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear for fear has to do with punishment and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar for he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. And that's the fellowship of the church. Amen. Neville, come lead us in song. Good evening. We're going to start with uh, they will know we are Christians by our love. Good. I'm glad you remember that. 429, 429, singing verses 1, 3, and 4. side 
and regard each wave's dignity and save everyone's pride and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. All oh, praise to the Father from whom all things flow. All oh, praise to Christ Jesus, his only Son. And all oh, praise to the Spirit who makes all us one. And they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Well, you know what you need to do now. You need to greet one another. Take your seats. We're going to continue with 439. 439, Song to the Nations. A shining light to the people of the earth Till the whole world sees the glory of your name May your power shine through us Verse 2 and 5 May we bring the world of hope to the nations of the earth till the whole world knows the nation through your name may your mercy flow through us verse 5 may we be kingdom come to the nations you will be done in the people of the earth till the The next one is 423, 423, Bond of Love. We'll sing both verses. everyone. Tonight we're only going to do one country and it's Bhutan. In 2019 I have the privilege of joining a small team to visit there and be um, hearing directly from the uh, pastors who's been in prison and beaten persecuted for their faith there. It was a very encouraging time to see how they kept up uh, even though their numbers are few and opportunities are few. Uh, so Bhutan is a country is in the Himalaya, it's uh, north um, of India, it's south of China, 
And um, it's a kingdom, they, they pride themselves as a Buddhist kingdom, and the king responsibility is to maintain Buddhism in his nation. So every citizen, every person is expected to follow Buddhism, and that brings challenges for the Christian because they have to go through these Buddhist practices and ritual, and um, there's no official church, there's no official gathering, uh, they're just house churches or underground or deemed as illegal. Uh, the pastors are always threatened with uh, home invasion of surveillance and being watched, so they have to be very careful. So Bhutan ranks 36 on the World Watch list, and we'll pray for our brother and sister. And I just uh, love last week's sermon. Uh, Dad reminds us that we can do nothing apart from Jesus Christ, but in that very same teaching, he shared that God invites us to ask in his name. And so I want to use the scriptures that Dad shared last week. And for those of you online, Dad is Pastor Raj. <laughs> okay, so that's from uh, 1 John uh, chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. And this is the confidence that we have towards him. And if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we have asked him. So let's pray for our brother and sister in Bhutan. Abba Father, we thank you that you have grafted us into the true vine and that you have appointed us to bear fruit. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, that we were reminded last week that you have spoken these things, that we may have joy in you. So, Lord, I ask first for the joy of the Lord for our brother and sister in Bhutan. Father, that you strengthen them by your word, by your promise. Despite of the circumstances, lack of uh, resources, lack of opportunities, and these threats of being imprisoned, Lord, that our brother and sister continue to persevere and bear fruit for your glory, Lord. And Father, I pray specifically for this asking in your name, this place of prayer and confidence as they ask according to your will, that break through the uh, Buddhist rituals where people subjected themselves to these vain things, to a, a, a falsehood, to a false idol, in hope of having children, in hope of having what they want, but it's a vain thing. So I am asking through the means of prayer that you manifest your presence that you manifest supernaturally healing. You manifest a breaking down of strongholds in this country. We ask that you open up this nation, Lord, to be a nation of Jesus Christ, that indeed the King of glory will come. We ask for the King and the Queen, Lord, that your Holy Spirit come and, and be, cause them to be born again, that they may experience your redemption, your forgiveness, and most of all, your love. In Jesus' name I pray. Thank you. Um, good evening, everybody. Um, I'm back, and I've got another guest with me, my sister Emily. And thank you. <laughs> thank you for having us. And we're going to sing this song called Broken Vessels. Um, it's another rendition of Amazing Grace. And it just reminds us that we are broken as sinners, um, but God's amazing grace saves us. broken and scattered in mercy gathered mended and whole empty handed but not forsaken I've been set free I've been set free amazing grace how sweet saved a wretch like me Ooh, oh, I once was lost but now I am found was blind but now I see oh I can see you now I can 
can see the love in your eyes laying yourself down raising up the broken to our failure you take our weakness you set your treasure in jars of clay so take this heart lord i'll be your vessel the world to see your life in me oh amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Oh, I can see you now. can see the love in your eyes laying yourself down raising up the broken to Pastor Raj with the ability to bring us your word and I pray that we all feel your love this week and the weeks going on and in Jesus name amen on. Joyce plugged me in, yet yeah, now I'm on. <clears throat> Might turn me down a little bit, though. Very good. Well, welcome again, everybody. So good to see you. Would you kindly take your Bibles and turn once again to John chapter, John chapter 15. John chapter 15. If you haven't got wind of it yet, we've uh, put our theme tonight on the word Love, <laughs> our songs that we sang and what our young ladies gave to us uh, centering on the love which Christ has for us. Love, love is the theme that most of the world's eight plus billion people have heard of, but sadly they know very little bit about. Some would say, well, love is something which is merely an idea. Maybe it's a feeling, 
Others would say, well, love must be earned or else it's not really love. While others would say, certainly there is love, but I don't know if it can really change a person's life. Well, what does God's word have to say about love? Well, the Bible tells us that God's love is real. It's not just a feeling. It tells us that rather than trying to earn his love, by his grace we receive it as a gift. Oh, how wonderful is that? And it indeed changes a person's inside, leading them to a lifestyle of giving and doing things for others. That's what love does for us. But now notice how specifically God's love is spoken of in his word. I'm going to give seven examples. There's a host more. But notice how God's love touches all these different areas of our lives. First of all, notice whose God's love is for. John 3, 16. Say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loves everyone. No one is left out. Then Jeremiah 31.3 tells us how long God's love lasts. God himself says, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Aren't we glad? Psalm 36.5 tells us how vast God's love is. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Psalm 34, 7 tells us how God's love protects us. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Matthew 5, 43 through 45 instructs us how God's love enables us to love those who are against us. You have heard it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. And in Romans 5, 8, God's love treats us as we do not deserve. And how thankful we are tonight that it does. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, literally, his enemies, Christ died for us. Now, there are many, many, many more scriptures regarding God's love. If you want to have a good study for yourself, uh, take your Bible, look back into your concordance, a good concordance, and look up the word love, loves, or loved. And you will find many, many passages which speak of God's love. It will be a great encouragement to you. Well, tonight we will learn how love, God's love, works in our lives as we consider part two of our theme, bearing fruit for the master. We cannot bear fruit for the master if our lives are not lived with the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. So would you first look with me tonight, verse 12, John chapter 15, as we consider the theme, once again, bearing fruit for the master. Jesus is speaking. This is my commandment, that you love one another as what? <clears throat> I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father, I have made known to you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you love us in spite that we were your enemies. We thank you that you call us your friends when by faith we receive you into our our lives as our Lord and Savior. We praise you that you have revealed to us the very mind and will of your Father. We are a blessed people. We have so much to be thankful for. And Lord, I pray for each one that's here in the worship center tonight. You know the needs of each one's lives. You know the difficulties, the questions, the problems that they have. 
And I pray, Heavenly Father, that we would know tonight that we are not alone, that they are not alone, that you are here for them, and that as we leave this place, we would leave encouraged, knowing that by faith, we belong to you and praise your name. You never leave us or forsake us. Praise you, dear Father God, for Jesus. We ask it in his name. Amen. Amen. First of all, would you please notice what Jesus says to us about loving one another as he loves us? It is not a suggestion. It is a command. Our love for one another is often selfish. Therefore, he doesn't say, go ahead and love one another as you have been doing. No, we are to love one another as he loves us. Our love is selfish. We love others if it doesn't cost us too much. If the cost is too much, we hold back. But we notice that as Christ loves us, he gave up himself for us completely. He gave his all for us. What a glorious Savior he is. To think that he would die on the cross for us, sinners who were against him. And yet because of his great love, he paid the debt we owed. By faith, he restored us to his Father. He's given us a wonderful life to live now. And he's prepared a home for us in heaven. You talk about love. That's love. And what a wonderful Savior we have. The Apostle Paul says this about God's love and mercy, Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses. Trespasses talks about willful wickedness that we have done in our lives. Even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Now, having just heard that passage of Scripture tonight, we probably didn't realize it, but how personal that passage was the pronouns that the Holy Spirit gave to Paul to use. There are six of them. Four times he said, God loves us. And then he uses the word our and you. God's love is not abstract. It's not out there. It is personal. It is in us. It is to us. We are not a number to God. You and I have been in stores and we have a little thing in our hand. All right, I want number 29 to come forward, please. You ever been a number? Pretty impersonal, is it not? You and I are not numbers to God. Eight billion plus people on the face of the earth, and God knows each and every one of his children personally. He listens to us. He has the ability to listen to all of his children all at once, knowing our needs, hearing our cries. What a wonderful personal, loving God we worship. His name is Jesus Christ. And to those of us who have taken God at his word and believed in Jesus alone for the forgiveness of our sins, we see once again through John 10 how personal his love is for us. For here Jesus says, to him, to Christ, the gatekeeper opens the door and the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep, how? By name, by name, and leads them out. And when he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. It was a common practice back in the first century AD that shepherds would combine their sheep in one sheepfold. But even though the sheep would be intermingled amongst one another, when one shepherd called, the other sheep would not pay attention. Why? Because they didn't know the voice of that shepherd. But when their shepherd called, even though they were intermingled with all the other sheep, their ears picked up and they knew their shepherd's voice. And they had ways of calling their sheep so that when the shepherd called out a name 
for a particular sheep, that sheep's ears would pick up and it would do what the shepherd told him to do. The Lord Jesus knows each of us by name. He knows us and he leads us personally by his grace. What a wonderful, wonderful shepherd. What a wonderful Lord that we worship and serve. We also know that as we look into God's word regarding God's love, God's love breaks down barriers. It brings us together. It creates a spirit of unity and grants us guidance. Why? Because of his ministry and love and grace goes forth in power. And now as you and I yield our lives to the ministry of God the Holy Spirit, the love which belongs to the Lord Jesus, the love which is Jesus Christ, dwells in us, and through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, we have the privilege of sharing and ministering to others through his love. This one primary command for those who are truly disciples of the Lord Jesus, to love one another as he has loved us, is so tremendously important to us and oftentimes, we forget it. About this love, Dr. Edwin Blum writes, Christians grow by caring for and nurturing each other. The standard for that love is Christ's example of humble, sacrificial service. He said, as I have loved you. But then would you notice with me, please, what he says in verses 13 and 14, our Lord most clearly states what is expected of those of us who have committed our lives to him. Verse 13, John 15. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. We realize that the most wonderful thing that a person can do for another is to die for them, is to lay down their life for them. And first of all, what Jesus says here is a reference to his supreme sacrifice when he died on the cross for our sins. He is that friend. He is that one who loved us as nobody else could, and he died paying for our sins. Then in verses 14, and 15, 14 of John 15, Jesus now shares how friendship with him is nurtured. And who here, doesn't matter how long we've known the Lord Jesus, all of us need our love for the Lord Jesus Christ to be continually nurtured, deepened for him. He talks about this, verse 14, John 15. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Yes, we show our love for the Lord Jesus as we obey his commands. In James 2, verse 23, the apostle gave us a wonderful testimony of a man who loved God and obeyed him. He says this, And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. How awesome that was back in Abraham's day, back in the Old Testament. We also read of this in 2 Chronicles 27 and Isaiah 41.8. Abraham dared to believe God when it seemed impossible that what God said he was going to do. Abraham said, yes, Lord, I believe. And through belief in what the Father had said to him, God says, you are not just my creation. You are my friend. What a privilege to be a friend belonging to our almighty God. Our obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ doesn't save us from our sin, but it gives evidence that we do belong to him through faith in his name. And out of love for him, we obey his commands. Again, Dr. Edwin Blum says this, Abraham's friendship with God reveals to us, like close friends, Abraham and God communicated well with each other. You know, a lot of people think that God is abstract, that he's not there, that he's not personal. They don't believe in his word. In Bhutan, 
Bhutan is a very beautiful country. It has all kinds of practices that look glorious. You see their temples, and people think, oh, how holy. No, it is not. Why is it not? Because it does not proclaim Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. There is religion that is made by man, but man's religion does not reach up to God. It doesn't get any higher than the ceiling. The only way that brings us to God is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, his Son, our Savior, who declared to us the Father's love for us. And through faith in him, we are not only his children, John 1, 12, and 13, we are called his friends, his friends. You ever had somebody real personal that you wanted to introduce, this is my friend? Yes, we've all had people, and we couldn't wait to introduce people to our friend. How wonderful, how wonderful that the Lord Jesus couldn't wait to say to you and me, friend, (laughs) friend, and how wonderful it is for us to take our friend, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and introduce him to others who do not know him. But now then, what the Lord Jesus is saying to his disciples then, and what the Holy Spirit is saying to us today, it's not just minimal, it is extraordinary. Just as Abraham was called the friend of God, as God's revelation came to him and he believed it, so also those who follow Christ, we who follow Christ, are privileged to understand the extraordinary revelation through the Messiah and Son of God, Jesus Christ, and in believing him, in believing his revelation, even as Abraham believed the revelation from God the Father, we believe the revelation from God the Father and God the Son, we are called his friends. By the way, the word friend here speaks of loyalty, an affection for one another that spring from loyalty and love for God. Oh, dear friends, you may not feel loved by a number of people, but I want you to know this. In knowing Jesus Christ, you are loved by Almighty God himself. You are loved by God the Son, Jesus Christ. You are loved abundantly And we should rejoice that we are loved by our wonderful Lord. Well, now in the matter of applying these truths to our lives, that we are to love each other as Jesus has loved us, we may not have to die for one another. God forbid that we should. But in other countries, 5,000 or more people have paid the ultimate price today for living for Jesus Christ. They've lived by dying for Jesus They have given a testimony, I will not get rid of him, I will not denounce him, I embraced him as my savior, I will not change. And they paid the ultimate price. Perhaps they paid that for someone of their family. We do not know. But we know that at times that happens. You and I may not have to pay that ultimate price for one another. But there are other ways in which we can show this sacrificial love of Jesus for one another, being available to one another, listening to one another. Do you realize how many people today really just want somebody to listen to them? Have you noticed years, years, I'm going back now in time, back on the radio, we used to have these radio psychologists. These people would pay big bucks to talk to the radio psychologist. And it's interesting, they might have been on the air for half an hour with a psychologist, or even in the office, not on radio. They pay big dollars. And so the psychologist or the doctor says, okay, tell me your story, would you please? And the person begins to tell a story. And the psychologist says, "Mm mm-hmm, yes, yes. Hmm, all right, continue. Half hour's up. Oh, doc, Thanks so much. You really listened to what I had to say. The doctor gave no advice, really. He said nothing. But what did he do? He listened. And that's what the person wanted. They wanted somebody to, well, somebody just listen to me. (laughs) We can listen to one another. 
And in listening to one another, we can pray for one another. We can encourage one another. We can give to one another. These are all tangible expressions of selfless love. And so I have a question for us tonight. In fact, I've got several, as I always do. Are we truly seeking to show sacrificial love to one another, or are we only looking out for ourselves? That's a question we all have to ask. I have to ask every day of my life. Heavenly Father, am I really seeking to love others as you do, or am I only looking out for myself? But then secondly, when we love one another as Christ loves us, it leads Christ to confide in us the mind and will of his Father. Would you look at verse 15, John chapter 17? Jesus goes on to say, No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you, here it is again, friends. For all that I have heard from my Father, notice, I have what? I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. In verse 15 of John 15, Jesus said that he no longer called his disciples as servants, but as friends. This is a great change. You ask, why the change? Well, if you go back to the first century AD, you would find that a servant was literally called a slave. The servant did not have a close relationship with the person who owned him, with his master. He didn't have a close relationship as friends do. Normally, a slave was not told what the master was thinking, except when it was given as an order. But the master did not confide in the slave. But how different it is with the Lord Jesus. Since Jesus had opened himself to his disciples, the title slave or servant no longer typified their, their relationship. He had divulged what the Father had given to him, and he divulged it to his disciples. They were his close associates. They were his friends. He revealed his Father's mind and will to them. And this most certainly tells us of the closeness of their relationship, and of our relationship to the Father. We are not just a person belonging to the Lord. We are his children, his son or daughter. We are his friends. We are those who mean the absolute world to him. And he delights through the ministry of the Holy Spirit in sharing with us the mind and the will of the Father as we look into his word and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us and teach us. Aren't you thankful tonight for the ministry of the Holy Spirit? We would be absolutely lost without him. But then as our Lord clarifies his relationship with his disciples, he mentions something very important, something that they needed to remember and we should remember also. He says that something that was common back in that day, he says, I did, you did not choose me, but what? I chose you. Back in Jesus' day, if you were thinking of being a Pharisee, you were thinking to be a, a religious teacher, and you had proven yourself that you had an ability, you chose the teacher that you were to be taught from. Paul chose Gamaliel. But notice, the disciples didn't choose Jesus. He chose them. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And how thankful we are that they and we are chosen of him. But just as you and I have been chosen by the Lord, we do well to remember that this places us at odds with someone. It places us at odds with the unbelieving world. 
So many of those 8 billion plus people do not believe in the word of God. They do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. They would not have yours and my best interests at heart. And the Lord wanted his disciples to realize, according to verse 19, John 15, that they needed to be on their guard. For in verse 19, John 15, he says, If you were of the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world what? Hates you. The world hates you men. You need to understand that as you belong to me, you now are a marked person as it were. You now have a life that you belong to me. You are one of those Christians. You are one of those who belong to the way. And that was a derogatory meaning back then. Oh, they belong to the way, meaning they belong to that person, Jesus Christ. But it came to be a joy to belong to the way. And he wanted them to realize, as you belong to me, realize it's not going to be easy out there. So you need to continually depend upon me for your grace, for your wisdom, for your strength, for your endurance. And know this, I will be there for you. We as disciples, as friends belonging to Jesus Christ, need to always be on our spiritual guard, for there are those who will want to trip us up. And believe me, they are out there. An anonymous Bible commentator made this comment regarding Christ's choosing of us. He says, Jesus made the first choice to love and die for us, to invite us to live with him forever. We make the next choice to either accept or reject him. Without his choice, we would have no choice to make. Wow. Without his choice, we would have no choice to make. Why did he make that choice of us? Because of his great love. His great love. I don't know about you, but uh, you probably know by now after all these years, I, I preach with passion. I preach with emotion. That's the way God has created me. That's the way he's made me. And I thrill, I thrill when I sense of the love of a family member. But there are times in our relationship with Jesus Christ that his love is made so real to us May I say to you, enjoy those times. Rejoice in those times when it is made fresh to you and to me how much Jesus loves us. And we're going to do that tonight as we partake of the Lord's table. The Lord Jesus' purpose for choosing these men, these men, was special. You may have wondered, what is my mission in life as a child belonging to Christ? Dear friends, our mission as a person, as a friend, a child belonging to Christ, is that we bear fruit. We bear fruit. We bear fruit for Jesus Christ. This bearing of spiritual fruit, which honors our Lord, also leads to a productive prayer life, according to what Jesus said in verse 16, John 15, that you should go and bear fruit. Now notice, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Now, some would say, well, I can just ask the Lord for anything, <laughs> and he's going to do it. We need to go back to 1 John 5, 14 and 15, where John says, on authority of the Lord Jesus, if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So the child of God that's abiding in Christ, who's seeking to live for him and bear fruit for him, he will not be asking for things that would be against what the Lord himself would pray. We will only seek those things that honor the Lord and those things for which Christ himself would pray. And verse 17, then of John 15, after saying all of these things, 
Jesus brings us back to his commandment, verse 12. These things I command you so that you will love one another. I want to ask you a question. Is there somebody in your life, a fellow believer in Christ, that you have a hard time loving? Don't raise your hand, but some of you blinked. (laughs) Some of you blinked. We probably all do. There are people that may be great on us or we great on them, and we have a very difficult time in getting along with them. May I share with you that those are the people that we need to go to the Lord to and say, Father God, I don't have the love for them that I should. Lord Jesus, would you give me your love for them and love them through me. Love them through me, dear Lord Jesus. In other words, as Jesus talks to us about his love, we're to love others as Christ loves us. (laughs) We ever upset him? (laughs) I'm sure we do. I'm sure I do. We're to love others as Christ loves, voluntarily, sacrificially, even if that should mean one day giving our life for another, if that's God's will. We're to do all of this for the glory of the Father. And so as we think of coming to the table of the Lord tonight, we realize that as Jesus says those words, love one another as I have loved you, the Lord Jesus most certainly shows us the pinnacle of his love for us, when he died on the cross for our sins. Men, could I kindly ask you to come, those of you who I've asked to lead us in communion. Jarman and David on this side, and Don and Neville on on this side would be down the aisle here, please. Have you in front of us, men? Let us pass out the the elements. Dear family, God bless you as you partake of the Lord's table, remembering of Christ's great love for you. This is a very special time for us. I've had the privilege to break bread in other parts of the world very primitive places, and every time I've done it, it's very, very special, even to those. How wonderful to know, to know that Jesus Christ loves us, that he died for us. In eternity past, he already knew who we are. He already knew the sins we would do. And yet he still loved us. That's absolutely amazing that he would love us like that. But he did, and he does. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this bread which signifies your broken body. And your body was horribly broken prior to the cross and on the cross. And Lord, we just marvel. We marvel at what you went through for us. But you did it because you loved us. You knew that only you could take care of what we needed to have done. And you fulfilled it. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying for us. Say your name. Thank you for dying for me, for Roger. Say your name. We praise you, Lord Jesus, and we give you all glory. On that night in the upper room, the Lord Jesus said, this is my body which is broken for you. Take and eat all of it in remembrance of me. Just as that song said, let us break bread together on our knees. There's another song that came to my mind. 
What can wash away my sin? <laughs> Nothing but the blood, the blood of Jesus. Jesus. For someone to lay down his life for his friends, I mean, that's, that's everything. That's all that is, that is beyond imagination. It's beyond what we can think of. We, we can't earn it. We don't deserve it. Um, how great the Father's love for us. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you that your love is so great uh, that you would become one of us through your son, Jesus Christ, that you would take on flesh and, and walk a road of sorrows and die on a, on a, on a torture device, a mm. cross. And, and Lord, you did that because you saw our need and you loved us that much. Uh, and greater love indeed has none than this, that he laid down his life for his friends. So thank you for laying down your life for us and for calling us your friends. May we live in light of that in obedience to you. Yes, Thank Lord. you for the blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And as he met in that upper room with his disciples, he said is the, the new covenant in his blood shed for the forgiveness of sins. Please take and drink. Amen. Neville, please come and lead us. Please stand and uh, we'll sing 418, 418, make us one. <clears throat> That's what the world needs to see, that we are one in Christ. May I leave us with what Paul says in Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent, and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ when he comes again filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God, that our love may abound more and more. As we spend time with the Lord in his word this week, may we see our love growing more and more in Jesus Christ. May that be our prayer, dear family. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you online. We look forward, God willing, seeing you next week. Thank you, Neville.